Good morning. Uh, welcome back to my channel. I'm going to be painting. Uh, I'll start work on a painting today. That is a photo that I took when I was on, in Corfu last year. Um, in September, after I retired, I went on a two-month tour of Europe. I had such a great time. I call it my grand adventure. Visiting family and friends, traveling by train and plane, staying with people, staying in youth hostels. It was just such a fantastic trip. Anyway, so I was in Corfu and I took that photo from my friend's villas. I'm going to be leading a painting workshop on in Corfu, on, in, on. It's an island, so on. <laughs> on Corfu next October, this coming October, October uh, 7th to 14th, 2024. And um, where I took this photo is from the villas where we'll be staying. So this is going to be in this series of paintings I'm doing right now. And um, yeah, so you might notice I'm wearing my uh, sleep mask upside down here. And <laughs> the reason for this is I actually put my camera here and then when I'm painting it's a better way of showing you more close up what I'm doing and I can still see what I'm filming because I I don't really have like the equipment yet to do this properly so I figured out this was a good way of doing it whenever you uh, don't have something that you need improvise so this is my improvisation Okay, I'm going to turn the camera around and film with my camera right here. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start by talking about the color palette that I'm using. I've got two yellows, two reds, two blues, some earth tones, and a white. And for the yellows, I've got a warm yellow, cad, cadmium yellow medium, and then cadmium cadmium yellow pale which is the cool yellow it's considered cool because it goes more towards the green and this goes a little bit more towards orange making it warmer in the reds cadmium red medium is a warm red it goes more towards the orange whereas this um, alizarin crimson alizarin oh no it won't focus there okay alizarin crimson is a more towards the purple um, so it has a bit more blue in it. So that's the cool, that's the warm. Then the two blues I'm going to use are ultramarine blue, and it is the warmer of the two blues. This thalo blue, it goes a little bit more towards green, so that's considered a cool blue. Then the earth tones that I'm using are burnt umber, which is warm, and raw umber, which is also a brownish color, but it's a little more gray, so that's a cool color. Yellow ochre is very warm, but it's a good earth color to use, especially if you're painting um, from lands that are in warmer climates where sometimes the earth is actually uh, a, a warmer color, plus some of the greens are, are more like a sap green. Anyway, this is a good yellow to use for mixing some of your greens. And then the white, that I use is titanium white. There we go, titanium white. And I always use artist quality paints, not student paints, because the pigment that they use is a more saturated color. You get more bang for your buck, so to speak, with um, artist quality paints. So in looking at my reference image, I'm looking at the kind of the grayish purpley clouds, this beautiful orangey yellow sky in, in the middle, kind of purpley clouds below. There's a dark green, there's light green, there's a sage green. The grasses that are reflecting the skylight have a lot of warmth to them. So the colors I've chosen for this particular painting so far are titanium white, the, two, the warm and the cool yellow, the warm and the cool red, the ultramarine blue, and then raw umber, which is a brown, and add when you add white, 
I'll show you what it looks like when you add light. It turns into this kind of taupey color. So there's my reference image and then on my canvas board I've just drawn in a very basic sketch of the main shapes so that I know where to put in the sky. I'm, I'm going to start by blocking in some colors. So I'm going to start with the sky, blocking in some of that sky. So let's mix some, put some Gamsol to thin out my paint. Get a little bit of blue down here, a bit of this crimson. It's very dark. We'll add a bunch of light. And I'll just start putting it on. It's a little more purpley than it needs to be, but this is just an undercoat. And we're just going to put it all across the sky. Okay, I'll, I'll be adding a lot more to the sky. Now I'm going to clean my brush, do a bit of green. So I've just mixed a bit of the yellow and orange with a bit of white. And I'm just going to lay in. Let's see how to do this. Where some of this orange goes. Hi, welcome back. Uh, this is the next day and I've set up my camera slightly differently. You can't see the um, palette very well, but you can see my, um, my canvas board here. So that's the most important thing. And um, you can see at the top, I have a post-it note that I noticed you can see now, which is called Postcards from My Travels. And I'm gonna do a series of little paintings, small paintings like around this size that I'm gonna call postcards from my travels. So that's what this is. Uh, this is the first one of a series. Now where I left off from yesterday, it's a very basic painting. I was just blocking in the colors and just seeing where where the shapes are and what the composition of the painting is. So now I'm going to work more on adding more paint to the colors, to the sky. It'll be darker as you saw in the image 
yesterday. And uh, yeah, well, I think I'll just start and then you can see what I'm going to do. Okay, I've mixed up more of my paint colors here that I'm going to use for the sky. And I've switched to a wider brush as well compared to the one I was using yesterday because I like to make larger strokes for the sky. Now let's just try some and see how it looks on here. Quite light. Very purple. A bit grayer. I'm going to add a bit of whiter in the central part here. And then paint over it. In fact, there's more, you can see whiter cloud coming through there as well. quite a lot. It's not finished. There's more tweaks that I want to make on the sky. But now I want to go back and finish the bottom part of the painting. I find it really helps uh, helps me if I bring up the painting together. In other words, don't complete this section and then complete another section. So now I'm going to work on the greenery, a little bit of the sky, which will be behind some of the olive trees, which are more here. And then this knoll with the grasses and there's a little gate there. And yeah, so I'll show you how I'm going to do that part. for today and just let this painting dry out a bit overnight because all in this area here I have to put quite light grasses on top and then here are the little it's sagebrush so I have to put lighter green on here I'll show you in the picture so all of these little light grasses here I think they'll blend in with the wet paint too much, so I think I'll just let it dry a bit. And then work on the grass and the sage. And then I'll also add some more detail to the sky here. Make that separation between the cloud and the sunlight more clear. Okay, so that's where I'm going to leave it for tonight. And I'll work on it tomorrow, and I'm pretty sure I'll be able to finish it tomorrow. So thanks for watching so far. I really appreciate it.